<clears throat> hey, what up everyone? I'm Cynical, and this is EverQuest Project 1999. And we're heading back to Befallen on our level 10 Necromancer. So, this is the way to Befallen. We uh, just zoned in from Eastern Common Lands, which uh, uh, is bordered by... Here, I'll get this right this time. Ready? Nectalus Forest. Uh, Freeport. Western Common Lands. And I think it's one of the Karanas or something. It's not the Oasis. It's not Kanos. I was off a little bit. But it's something like that. That's That's a better better assessment, or a better guess. But follow the sand. Uh, this is the uh, west common lands. Uh, the zone adjacent to the eastern common lands where everyone does their auctioning and whatnot in the auction tunnel. So we're going to head back into this dungeon of Befallen, and we're going to go deeper in. Deeper. Uh, the first time in the first, in the last video we were in the, the first door on the right, the right uh, front wing. The front right wing of Befallen. Pretty easy there. Uh, everything was giving me experience, though, so that was nice. We got the level 10. Uh, so I'm going to show you the back right wing this time. This is where you get the first key to go deeper in. Uh, there's a key. There's a there's a, uh, a troop you need to kill, uh, a mob you need to kill, a spawn you need to kill, a shadow knight that spawns. He don't even spawn every single time. you got to wait till he spawns. Then when he does spawn, he will drop a key. That lets you get into the back left door, and that leads deeper into like the the dungeon proper, really. You know, the the two the the right side of this first floor is just a uh, just a low level area. You know, it's level ten, level nine, level eight, something like that. You could probably do a little bit more. Um, there is an enemy that I will show you in the back left, where we're gonna do our uh, grinding. We're going to do the back left wing, or back right wing this time, so the back, and so the front right wing. This is where we did last time, was right here. So, I'm coming into this dungeon, I'm seeing how many people are in here, and I'm like, man, is there going to be anywhere for me to grind at? Am I going to be able to claim anything? Because there are so many people in here, so I was wondering. So I'm looking around, I'm seeing what's going on. That's kind of the first thing you do. You could do a camp check, you know, you could yell out uh, CC. And people would have to tell you what uh, camps they're claiming. Uh, but I don't even really know the camps for this dungeon. So I'm just looking around in the little, the low-level areas of the dungeon just to see if anybody's in them. And I didn't really see anyone. It looks pretty clear, though, like somebody had cleared it out. So that's good for me. I'm going to sit here and get ready to go. Um, so getting ready to go, that means, you know, getting my pet up. Uh, giving my pet a weapon, hopefully. Uh, putting on my buffs, like uh, Lesser Shielding, Grim Aura. Maybe buffing my pet a little bit with uh, the Strength buff that where I give 10 Strength. My, I give my pet 10 Strength, and I lose 10 Strength. Stuff like that. But this back right wing of the area, I just did invis Invisibility versus Undead. So now the Undead enemies can't see me. I'm doing that just to look around and see what we got, what we're working with uh, in here. But yeah, Befallen, a low level, one of the first dungeons you would go to in the game, like similar to like Black Burrow. Uh, Black Burrow, and uh, that is actually the dungeon that is near, um, I think, Kanos. Uh, it has a bunch of gnolls in it. This is like the same level range, kind of, but instead it has Undead in it. Which is good for me, because I have Ward Undead, which is a really good spell against Undead. Plus I have Invisibility versus Undead. I'm a Necromancer. Uh, that's my, that's the, Undead is my thing. So, just looking around, uh, just to see, is anybody up here? Is anybody claiming these, this, this right wing at all? And if not, I'm going to try to take both, both wings. At least grab from both. I'll probably sit here in this hallway right here, or somewhere nearby. That way people know that I'm in here, uh, and kind of claiming it. And, uh, yeah, start killing everything. Um, what, what kind of spawns are in here? So, straight ahead, there is a putrid skeleton that spawns, pretty much right where I'm looking. 
uh, which is good, because usually those are still at least blue. Sometimes they're green, but they still give experience. Everything in here is giving me experience still, uh, which is good. At level 10, the only thing that doesn't give you experience is probably that wimpy skeleton out there, especially level 9. Level 9, you'll get experience from everything. Um, but just getting ready, and then the action will start, because everything's going to start popping and respawning, and we're going to start killing everything that's up. And uh, this is a more dangerous area. The front right wing, um, we we saw that last time. That had two putrid skeletons, uh, three plague rats, and three necromancers. Um, this one is going to have uh, a putrid skeleton in this first hallway. Two more down, two more back by that well that I showed you. If you fall down that well, you're screwed. By the way, you're all the way deep in the dungeon. On the third level, you fall to the basement and you're surrounded. So do not fall down that well. Be careful. I'll, sh I'll mention it again when we get by it. Um, but yeah, two putrid skeletons spawn around that well as also, which is good. And then a skeleton lord, I think that's how you say it. It's a special uh, spawn. He's for a quest, I think. Uh, he could be yellow. I think he's level 10 to 12, something like that. 10 to 13, something like that. Because he was red to me at one point, so I guess he would be 10 to 13. Something like that. So he's going to be pretty tough, but he does not aggro. He doesn't aggro. Everything else will, except for him. He's a special NPC for a quest. But you can you can kill him. Uh, and he does give good experience. Because he is level 10 to like 13 or 15 or something. Since I'm level 10, he'd be even or yellow or red. So if we can kill him... Uh, That'd be good experience. Uh, what you want to do, though, is kill everything else first and then kill him. That way, nothing joins in on your fight. And he will not join in on any other fights. So kill, for example, the two putrid skeletons that are near, near the well over there. That's where he spawns as well. As well. Get it? Uh, skeleton Lord spawns by the well also. So you could kill the two putrid skeletons over there. Get rid of the uh, two rooms. Everything in the two rooms. And the hallway here, and then you could go ahead and fight him, and you would have nobody jumping in. And it's it, and it's not the same the other way around. He does not jump in when you're fighting things. Uh, so yeah, just getting ready to go here. Sorry, well, I don't know if uh, we're just getting ready to go. There was a bunch of people in the zone, so I thought I was gonna have nothing to kill, but it seems to be a lot of higher level players this time. Last time we had a couple uh, low-level people trying to grab stuff, the same kind of things I was fighting. They were level like 6, 7, 8, and I was level 9, 10. So I was able to uh, hold down the camps I wanted to hold down because it's a couple levels above them. Um, but this time, there seems like nobody's up here. There's one. There was one druid I saw at the front. Well, when we zoned in, we saw that uh, enchanter or whatever the heck that was. But she, I never saw her again. Then there was a druid sitting by the entryway. And I don't know what she's doing, but she's a, a higher level. I don't think she's grinding on anything. Well, here we have a, a room. It, I think it has a necromancer and its pet. It has a plague skeleton. A putrid skeleton, sorry. And then another necro and its pet. So that looks like a bunch of enemies, but... um. You know, if I let my pet go solo against all that, it would probably not win. But uh, since I'm helping out, we'll be okay. I'm going to kill this putrid skeleton with Ward Undead. Look at all that damage. 40 points of damage. That's a lot. That thing probably has 100 HP, and I just did 40 points of damage to it. Only works against Undead, though, so I'm going to take out these two pets while my, uh, my pet fights the Necromancer. Because so I can do Ward Undead and, like, destroy them. Pretty easily. Try to get this. Uh, yeah, there we go. But I can use my cursor here if I want. But yeah, fighting this necromancer uh, pet. They also give experience, I think. Yes. So I was thinking uh, while I was doing this that I should always let the necromancers summon their pets. Normally, you would not want to do that if you're farming, if you're uh, camping an area where there's necromancers, and um, you're just wanting to make it as easy as possible. You'd probably want to kill the Necromancer as soon as it pops. Before it can summon its pet. Before it can buff itself. That way they're easier to kill. But um, 
I was thinking maybe they'll go ahead and let them summon their pet since they're green anyway. That could just be more experience. So maybe the between the pet and the necromancer, uh, both being green, but both giving experience, maybe between the both of them that could equal out to like a blue kill because there's two. Two green kills maybe equals a blue kill. So you can almost consider these necromancers as a blue con just because of the experience you get from two greens hopefully it would equal one blue. But who knows? I think these things are not like super duper green. Most of the time on greens you won't get experience. Uh, but if they're just barely green, you will still get experience. So uh, they must be level like seven or so. Let's say those necromancers are probably six, seven, something like that. So I'm still getting experience. So my thought was, hey, let those necromancers go ahead and summon their pets. That's just more experience for me because I get experience off the pets also. Uh, from now on, I might do that. Uh, just a thought I had while I was far, uh, camping this area, which I did. I camped this area for quite a, a while last night. Uh, I mean, quite a while to... And not in EQ terms. In EQ terms, quite a while would probably be like 10 hours. Uh, but I did this wing for around an hour, hour and a half. I got half my level, which is quite a bit. So I'm halfway into level 10 now. Um, going ahead and meditating. I don't know what's ahead. I haven't done this wing. This is the first time I've been in this wing by myself on my new Necromancer. So, uh... Don't know what's ahead, plus Skeleton Larod is yellow, and I'm going to try to fight him, so that is why I want to I wanna meditate to full mana, just in case. Because it's going to be a very tough battle. This guy is a, uh, a named. He's a named mob, so he might be tougher. Plus he's yellow, which is really hard to take out yellows. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and give it a shot, because if I can... Hold this guy down. This will be a really good camp for me right now. Uh, if I can kill Skeleton Lord or Larod or however you say it. I'm going to call it Skeleton Lord just for just for ease. Uh, but it's Skeleton L-R-O-D-D. -D, so I don't know. Um, someone just screamed ease. That's weird. I just said ease. But Skeleton Lord. Special spawn for a quest. So you might it might not be the greatest thing that I'm killing him. Maybe somebody would want to do this quest, but I don't think that many people actually do that quest. So probably not a big deal. Um, and he spawns I think every eight minutes, so that's pretty good. It would be it'd probably be better if he spawned like every five or six minutes, but eight minutes isn't too bad. That's that's like borderline what you want to wait for. Um, yeah, and he's yellow. Look at this, he's crushing me. I'm almost dead. Am I going to die? I can't remember. Do I die? Oh, no. I backed off my pet. My pet barely has any health, though. I need to hurry up and finish this matchup. Bang. Another ward undead crushes skeleton lord. Do I have any more? Do I have any left in me? No. I'm out of mana. I'm out of mana. Get up there, dude. You better get up there. Your pet's going to die. All right. But look at my health. He could crush me. 24 damage he just hit, he just hit me for. Bang. I got him, though. Me and my pet. I hit him for 6, my pet hit him for 11, and we won. That was a close one, though. Look at my health, look at my HP, uh, and look at my mana. And then my pet, my pet is almost dead also. He has, like, about the same amount of health as I do. So that was a close one. There's some uh, exciting action for you. I almost died. I killed a yellow named yellow in a dungeon. Like, how much more exciting can it get, guys? Uh, in EverQuest, um... You know, unless we're on a raid or something, that's probably the best you can hope for, is being in a dungeon killing named mobs, uh, and killing a named yellow mob in a dungeon solo as a necromancer. I don't know. Just hoping, uh, to do that a few times in here, at least. But, what eventually does happen, because I don't know how much longer I'm gonna be, um, recording here, but what does eventually happen is he turns red, and I, I get two chicken to uh, fight him again. But I do kill him a couple times. I think I kill him twice. He's yellow, and then I think he was white, and then he turned red, and I was like, oh, I can't, I probably can't beat him, because I, I remember that yellow fight right there that we just had. I'm like, if he's red, I'm probably going to die, because I remember what happened when he was yellow. So, um, 
We do not. We only kill him like one more time, and that's kind of that kind of stinks. But once we hit level 11, I think it'll be. I don't know. That's what. That's the bad thing because once we turn to level 11, everything else is going to give less experience. He'll be easier to kill, but then maybe the necromancers, the rats, the plague. Then the the necromancers and the rats may give us zero experience once we hit level 11. So, I don't know. That's what stinks about it. It would be cool if he if he wasn't red at 10. Um, if they could if they wanted to be nice, which they never do, that would be a nice thing they could do is not make the skeleton lord red. That way you could get experience from everything over here. Um, I guess if you're in a group, it wouldn't be that big of a deal. You could just go ahead and fight them if you wanted to. Because if you got six people pounding on a red, that's just barely red. You could probably do it. So, uh, probably not a big deal. Unless you're soloing. Which they don't really expect you to be soloing in a dungeon. But, I'm giving it a shot. And, this is a different kind of dungeon. This This undead dungeon, I think, is meant for, like, necromancers paladins, clerics, and shadow knights to come in here early and solo, so. Um, but most dungeons are not made for soloing. You're supposed to get in a group of six and uh, have a pooler and pool to a spot. Everyone usually sits in one spot. It's kind of different than other games, other MMOs. Like, if I remember correctly in WoW, you would, um, you would, uh, go, like, you would go through the dungeon, like, you would keep moving through the dungeon until you got to the end of it, right? Um, if I recall correctly, like, Scarlet Monastery, for example. You would move, you would kill everything and move through the whole dungeon until you got to the end. And then you could redo it again, and everything would repop and stuff, but, uh, you couldn't just sit there and let something, let a named mob m perhaps respawn over and over and sit there and kill it over and over. I don't think that's how it worked in WoW. Um, but in EverQuest, it's there's not instances. It's one dungeon for everyone on the server. Uh, there, everything's on a timer in the dungeon. And you sit in one spot and you camp one area and you have a pooler. So everybody will sit in one spot, a nice safe spot, and then the pooler will run out and grab everything from your camp and bring it back to the group so you all can jump it and pound on it together. You know, pack it out. And uh, hopefully there's a name that drops something awesome, and uh, you'll grab it every time it pops, and sometimes it'll have a placeholder. A lot of the time it will, so it doesn't even pop every single time. So let's say you're after a special named uh, skeleton that drops a special weapon, right? Well, 90% of the time, in his spot will not be him. It'll be his placeholder, which, let's say, is a rat. Uh, so you kill the rat, and then you wait for it to pop again. Let's say it's a rat again. You gotta kill the rat again. Wait for it to pop again. Let's say it's on a 10-minute timer. So every 10 minutes, you get a chance at this named mob that might have this uh, special piece of equipment that you want. You gotta keep on killing that same rat over and over and over until the special named skeleton pops so when that special name skeleton pops you kill that and you have a chance at a piece of equipment that he might drop let's say uh it's a special sword but he has like a ring a crappy ring that he also drops so 90 percent of the time he'll drop this crappy ring 10 percent of the time he'll drop that awesome sword you're looking for so let's say you're a warrior that really wants that that sword so you go into the dungeon and you start shouting that you want to join that group that skeleton guy you want to be in that group so you can uh, camp that skeleton guy and try to get that sword. Um, so you gotta sit there and wait till a spot opens in the group. Wait until a spot for a warrior opens in that group, by the way. And, uh, then once you get in the group, you have to wait until the dang thing pops. And then once you, once the dang thing pops, you have to wait until that special sword drops. So, this stuff can take hours and hours and hours and hours, and it, it's not even guaranteed to happen ever. So, that's how hard this game is. And, when you have something good, a good piece of equipment, it, it really means something in this game. Uh, because, you know, that meant you sat there and waited and waited and killed and killed until you got it. It wasn't just a guarantee that you definitely get if you kill that guy. And it's not even a guarantee that that guy will even be there. And it's not even a guarantee that you can even attempt to kill this guy. So, different than uh, instances, different than WoW and all that. But let's uh, watch me do a couple more kills and then we'll get out of here again. Um, next time I'm going to try to, um, I don't know, do something different. I'll probably be in this wing for actually a, 
at least until at level 11, because I kind of like doing this area. But there's the two putrid skeletons I was talking about. And there is the well I was talking about. Do not fall down that well. I wasn't even thinking about it at the time, but if my pet had fallen, if my pet fell down that well, oh, that'd probably be really bad. Also, that would cause a whole train in the whole zone, probably, because my pet would fall down there. All the big bad enemies down there, which it's in the basement, so the hardest enemies are probably down there. If my pet fell down that well. Like three or four really hard enemies would kill him, and then they would come looking for me. They know, they're smart enough to know that that pet came from somebody. And they could try to come and find you. So that would create a huge train. Because everything down there would start running to the running to find me. And then everything that they passed would join in on the train. You know, they would, they're pretty much saying, hey, somebody's in here, let's go get them. And then everything they pass, uh, they say, hey, come on, let's go. Hey, come on, let's go. Pretty much. So everything joins in until you have this huge line of... This huge parade, this huge train of enemies running towards you, trying to find you and kill you. Uh, and everybody that is in the way is going to get get it too. So that's what how a train would start, maybe. That's a, a good example. My pet would fall down that well all the way to the basement, would, would get killed by some really hard enemies, high-level enemies, and then they would come looking for me. And that would bring everything in the whole zone to wherever I am, and if I didn't hurry up and zone out, uh, it would eventually probably hit everyone in the zone and kill everybody in the zone. So that would be a one way a train might start. But uh, yeah, I think I'm going to cut it there. Uh, killed Skeleton Lord. Killed uh, some Necromancers. Killed some Putrid Skeletons. And yeah, I just kept grinding this area. Um, I don't know. Maybe we should go kill that Shadow Knight real quick. I think maybe i do that next. Let's wait and see. Maybe I'll keep going for to like the 30 minute mark this time for once. So I think I do kill the Shadow Knight that drops the key. And he also drops a uh, chipped wand or something like that. There's a special wand he drops. I don't know how rare it is, but I got it. And uh, it has three charges of locate corpse on it, which would be okay for some classes. Um, if you, that'd be a nice little safety net. If you ever died, you could have that wand to locate your corpse because that's not everybody has that spell. Um, I'm lucky enough that my Necromancer does have the spell that will let you locate your corpse. But that's a big problem for some people. They die, and they uh, can't remember where their corpse is. That actually happens. There's not anything that tells you that. You just have to remember where it was. Yeah, let's clear out this room. Let's, uh, I want to show you this whole area over here at least. We haven't been in this room yet, so I want to show you this room. And then we'll uh, maybe fight Skeleton Lord one more time. I don't know. Um, but more necromancers, more rats in here. Not really a big threat, just a bunch of green enemies. But they're all giving me experience. Like I said, uh, it looks pretty chaotic, but I, I have it under control. As long as I don't let my pet um, take all the hits when there's like three or four enemies. As long as I don't let him take all the hits and I um, burn down the undead as quick as I can with a ward undead. We're usually fine. Uh, the most trouble I had in this uh, wing uh, was that first fight with Skeleton Lord. So you got to see pretty much the hardest thing that happened. Um, there's a giant rat. I think even the giant rat gives me experience. And it got to a point where I was clearing everything in here. And then I was actually going out into the main hall and grabbing stuff out there. And then I was going back to the... the the front right wing and I was grabbing the putrid skeletons in there that we were doing last time so that's what I was hoping for last time when I was in that front right wing I was hoping that I could kill everything in there and then go and grab at least some stuff from the main hall and maybe some stuff from the back right wing so that was my uh, hope in that uh, first video but here's the shadow knight he's the one that drops the key that you need to get deeper into this zone so a very important true uh, enemy here um, because you can't even get, you can't even open the back left door and get further into the zone and fight some, some of the named that drop stuff, that drop good armor or good weapons. I don't even know what drops in this dungeon, actually, but you have to kill that Shadow Knight first, and you have to get that key to get further into this zone. It's like something everybody has to do. Uh, the key doesn't even, when you camp, when you quit playing the game, when you camp, 
The key disappears. So you have to come get this key every time you want to go deeper into this zone. Every time you log in. So I'm going to get the key, but I think it disappears when you camp. Something you need to grab every single time. Let's see what we get from the Shadow Knight. There's the key. Splintered wooden key. And a chipped bone rod. Uh, I'm not sure, but I think I don't think he drops that every single time. I think that might be a, a rare drop. Chipped bone rod. It has a locate corpse. Three charges. It's not like amazing or anything, but for people that don't have that, like why not? I think somebody would want it, and somebody might pay 25 plat for it or something like that. So I'm glad I got it. But yeah, that's what I keep doing. I'll go in there, I'll kill that guy, I'll kill everything in this room. There's the room across the hallway with the, the necromancers and the putrid skeleton. Then there's skeleton, the rod, and the two putrid skeletons by the uh, well over there. Just make sure you don't fall down the well. And then there's another putrid skeleton spawn in the um, the main little hallway there by the door. So that's what I was doing. I was continuing to kill everything. And then eventually I got on top of it. And... Um, Skeleton Lord turned red and I couldn't kill him anymore, so I was going out into the main hallway and back into the front right wing and starting to grab stuff from there again. But yeah, I'm gonna stop it there. Uh that's where you kill that's where you get the key to go deeper into the zone, and that is a pretty good uh named to kill the skeleton lord at this level, level ten, uh for necromancers especially, since we have Ward Undead. But uh yeah, like, share, subscribe, consider joining. It helps a lot. Uh comment below. And uh, I'd love to talk to you guys about EverQuest, especially Project 1999. Um, and thank you for watching so, so much. And I'll see y'all next time. Peace.